kind sir, don't tease me, for I've no time to stand. I'm off to Coor Town Harbour on the gory caravan. Hello everyone, hope you're all keeping well. We decided to have a virtual singing session this month as we're all missing our gatherings in the back room of French's and Gory. The next two hours is an opportunity for us all to be together through song, stories and friendship. May our time apart be short and pass. In good King Arthur's day, he was a merry king. He threw three servants out of doors because they wouldn't sing. Because they wouldn't sing, because they wouldn't sing, he threw three servants out of doors because he wouldn't sing. <clears throat> the first he was a miller, the second he was a weaver, and the third he was a little tailor, three thieving the rogues together, three thieving the rogues together. Three thieving rogues together, and the third he was a little tailor. Three thieving rogues together, well the miller he stole corn, the weaver he stole yarn, and the little tailor he stole broadcloth for to keep those three rogues warm, for to keep those three rogues warm, for to keep those three rogues warm. The little tailor he stole broadcloth for to keep those three rogues warm. Well, the miller drowned in his dam, the weaver home in his yarn, and the devil ran off with the little tailor with his broadcloth under his arm, with his broadcloth under his arm. With his broadcloth under his arm, and the devil ran off with the little tailor, with his broadcloth under his arm. Good men true in this house to dwell. To a stranger buckle, I bid you tell, is the priest at home, or may he be seen? I would speak a word with Father Green, the priest at home, and he may be seen. Sure, it's easy speaking with Father Green. But you must wait while I go and see If the Holy Father alone may be The youth has entered an empty hall What a lonely sound is his light footfall The gloomy chamber is cold and bare with a vested priest in a lonely chair. The lad is knelt to confess his sins. In nomin or day he, he begins. At mea culpa he beats his breast. In murmuring tones he speaks the rest. I cursed three times since last Easter day. At mass time once I he went to play. I passed the churchyard one day in haste and forgot to pray for my mother's rest. At the siege of Ross did my father fall, and at Gory my loving brothers all. I alone am left of my name and race. I shall go to Exford to take their place. I bear no hate against no living thing, but I love my country above my king. So, Father, bless me and let me go to die if God hath ordained it so. The priest said, Nout, 
but a rustling noise made the youth look up in wild surprise. The robes were gone and in scarlet there, so the yeoman captain with fiery glare, with fiery glare and with fury hoarse, instead of a blessing he breathed a curse. Twas a good thought, boy, to come here and shrive, for this one last hour's your time to live. On yonder river three tenders float, your priest in one if he's not been shot. We hold this house for our Lord the King, and the men said I may all traitors swing. At Geneva barracks, the young man died, and at passage there was his body laid. Good people who live in peace and joy, breathe a prayer, shed a tear for the crappy boy. A song from the Hill Street area of Wexford Town, uh, written in 1890, um, Carried River. As I roved out one evening in the pleasant month of May, it was down by Carrick River I carelessly did stray, where the hawthorn and sweet briar they would your heart illume and the rippling of the waters when the frockens were in bloom. I do remember long ago when together we did roam through the lovely dells of Carrig, where the woodcock makes its home, where all nature it seems a smiling along each rocky side, and the silvery stream flows down between to join the slain. Tis often that with vain regret we think of things we have seen. We have lived the past but can't forget, yet born what might have been. As we stroll along, the sweet bird song was ringing in the skies o'er the lonely graves of Carrick, where our ninety-eight men lie. Oh, the thoughts of you, sweet Carrick, are constant on my mind. I have run this wide world over, but your equal I can't find. With your lofty hills and waterfalls, it's them I do adore. So fare thee well, sweet Carrick, adieu for evermore. Lord Donegal. Lord Donegal, he stood at his own hall door, brushing his milk-white steed, 
When he was at rest by his own queen Isabel, who hastened to bid him God speed, saying, Where are you going, Lord Donegal? she said. Where are you going from me? I am going to New England, my Queen Isabel, and other strange places to see. When will you return, Lord Donegal, she said. When will you return unto me? When a year and a day has passed and gone, I return and get married to thee. That is too long, Lord Donegal, she said. That is too long for me. For you might forget your own Queen Isabel and pick up some other lady. Well, he had not gone but a very short time, a day and half a year, when trouble and sorrow came into his mind, which caused him to seek his own dear. And as he was returning all alone, rushing his milk-white steed, when he heard the sound of a mournful bell, and the ladies all mourning their being, Saying, who is it that is dead on today, and is going to be buried on tomorrow? Tis the king's only daughter, the lady's reply. And her name is Queen Anna Isabella. Well, he ordered the coffin right open to be, and the shroud to be torn down. When he fell a kiss in her cope lips, and the tears came rolling down. Saying now that I've kissed your cope lips, and you will never kiss mine. A vow and a promise I'll make unto thee. I will never kiss any but thine. Well, one of them died a death unto day, and the other a death unto morrow. Queen Anna Isabella died out of true love. Lord Donegal died out of sorrow. 
Well, one was buried in a St. Mary's church, and the other in a St. Mary's choir. Over Queen Isabella there grew a red rose, and over her lover a briar. Well, they grew, they grew to the church steeple top, until they could grow no higher. Where they nodded together in a true lover's knot. For all the world to admire. The autumn days are here again. And the night wind chilly blows The woodland turns to golden hue The harvest moons aglow I'll think again of days long past To come no more I know When I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago I see again the ocean and the distant waves afar As the maiden in the meadow strikes up dark Loch Nagar There was music soft and tender in the wind that whispered low when I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago. Where are the happy boys and girls who danced the gay quadrille? Or the singer who warbled sweetly the burning granite mill? To hear again at sunset where sweet afton waters flow When I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago Those days are but a memory like the snows of yesteryear and when evening shades are falling, all alone I shed a tear. On my cheek I feel the soft touch of the wind that whispered low. When I mowed Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago. This is a song about the late, great James Connolly, uh, Labour leader and revolutionary who was executed by Crown forces after the 1916 uh, rebellion. For me, uh, this song captures the affection uh, that Connolly was held in by ordinary people. He had spent his life defending them and trying to improve their lives and their lot, and that was reciprocated by people. Uh, who, who really, really loved Connolly. The song was written by uh, a Corkman called Patrick Galvin, originally as a poem, and was turned into a song. Uh, the origin of the air is, 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 is unknown, but it has been sung since the 1960s. Uh, notable versions by Christy Moore, by the Black Family, and of course by Frank Hart. Uh, there are different versions uh, and different verses. Uh, and I make no apology, this is uh, my version uh, of the song James Connolly. Uh, there are accounts of Connolly, and there is a great report from his daughter Nora, who travelled to Belfast after, long after the Rising and met people who Connolly had defended and worked for earlier. <clears throat> and it was, uh, she describes the, the affection that love people had for him and that when she'd meet people and be discussing James Connolly, that they would hold her hand and their eyes 
would fill it with tears. There's also the story of the Welsh soldier who was part of the firing squad who reportedly came to Dublin in the 1920s to seek forgiveness from the Connolly family for his part in that dreadful, dreadful, dreadful act. So anyway, enough of that. Here's the song. Where, oh, where is our James Connolly? Where, oh, where can that great man be? He's gone to organise the union. That working man, they might yet be free. Then who, then who will lead the van? Then who, then who will lead the van? Oh, but our James Connolly, the hero of the working man. Where, oh, where is the citizen army? Where, oh, where can that brave man be? They've gone to join the great rebellion. To break the chains of slavery. Who'll carry high that burning flag? Who'll carry high that burning flag? Oh, but James Connolly, all pale and wounded, could carry high that burning flag. They carried him up to Kilmainham. They carried him up to the jail And they shot him down on a bright May morning And laid him in a quick lime grave Who mourned the death of this great man? Who mourned the death of this great man? Oh, bury me down in yon green garden and make my bearers union men. So they buried him down in yon green garden, with union men on every side, and they swore they would form a mighty union. That James Connolly's name might be filled with pride. This song was written by Parik McGinn for the Bardarana competition that used to be held years ago. It was a competition for humorous verse. So he wrote it actually as a poem. I spotted it in a book that Parik published in Charlie Burns one day here in Galway. And I noticed that it was written in hornpipe time. 
so I fitted it to the tune of the old hornpipe, the cuckoo's nest. Well, I'm looking for a woman now that I'm getting middling old, and me hair is grown patchy, and me blood is turning cold. Oh, I've put it off for ages, but sure it's long been in my head. For they say there's nothing like a woman to warm up your bed. Well, now Mammy's past one hundred and she can't keep going much more. And sure when she's gone, who wash and iron, who sweep and scrub the floor. And feed the hens and make the cows and make soup from the bone. I and help save the hay and turf. Sure, I can't do it all alone. There were girls galore when I was young, blonde, brunette, and red. But your mammy said, Son, take your time and stick by me instead. There be girls to store when I am gone, sure, girls is ten a penny. And a man with twelve acres like yours. Could have his pick of any. Well, I courted Maggie Carter for twenty years or more. When she says I think tis time we wed, she was pushing forty four. When I said I go as Mammy just to see if she would mind, Maggie kicked me in the googly goose and then up the behind. When I told her, Manny says to wait, Maggie turned to me for sure, saying, Go sleep with your Mammy, ya hairy, humpy whore. May your schnats hang down like rashers, may your rashers taste like schnats. May you spend your days trying her to place, empty in her chamber pots. May you never have no sons and if you do, may they be warts. May you have to bow like a daughter's and may they all be tarts. May you swell constipation and then scutter like ten cows. May your prostate lick seven nights a week till your bed smells like a sow's. Then I walked out to Widow Sweeney, she was thin and hard and mean. When I heard she buried three husbands, sure I was no longer keen. So I told her I was sickly and not rich for endurance. Said she sure thought about it, lad, I collect your life assurance. Next came Maggie Bullock, she had cattle by the score, but her face was brown and wrinkled, like a woodworm ravaged door, with a chin that you could chopsticks with, and pies as thick as cakes. I am flannel knickers to her knees, to hide her big red legs. She had warts just like past chestnuts, and briery bristles on her chin, with a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp, or a plate of bartles in. If I saw that face beside me, in the bed some awful night, oh, I'd never see the morning, for me heart would fail with fright. But your mammy says, don't mind her looks, can't you make love in the dark? But I'd rather cuddle a chimpanzee, or French kiss the tiger shark. I'd have overlooked these failings, for her bank account was full. But she had one other showstopper, an arse like a shadowly bull. But oh, here I lie at seventy, tis nearly time I made a move. I've a decent house with a dresser, a table and a stove. I don't have tap or a toilet, I just squat behind some rocks. And if the grass is kind of scarce, sure there's loads of big green ducks. Now I don't want one with lipstick, thoughts eyelashes or mascara, nor manicures, nor hairdos. 
she the castle in the tower. Nam smoke and teetotal or preferred, like you get in Ireland's own. Now to one for go and not to pubs, just content to knit at home. And I don't want one who dyes her hair, or paints her toenails red. And I'd rather rave she didn't snore, or break wind in the bed. I don't mind if she slobbers, but I couldn't stand false teeth. For I'd hate to hear them clack, 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 as she chaws a lump of me. I want a girl that's natural, not a glossy paint to dull. With black lead on her eyelashes and boobs like a football. I don't approve of waxing, so I don't mind hairy shanks. But a beard under her oxter like a billy goat, no thanks. I'm looking for a woman, someone young and strong and healthy, not one with airs and graces. So I don't mind if she's wealthy, with a middle and decent figure, and a clean and well scrubbed face. And with God's help and by Agora, sure we liven up this place. Trees by Joyce Gilmore I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet loving breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Upon whose bloom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. This is a song, folks, that I got from um, Professor Mick Maloney. It's a song called Off to Philadelphia. Oh, me name is Paddy Leary from a spot in Tipperary. The hats of all the girls I am a tornin'. But come the break of morning, it is day. I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning With me bundle on me shoulder Sure there's no man can be bolder I'm leaving the old island without warning So I lately took a notion For to cross the briny ocean And I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning There's a girl called Kate Malone, sure I hope to call my own To see my little cabin floor adorning But me heart is sad and weary, how can she be Mrs. Leary When I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning But me bundle on me shoulder, sure there's no man can be bolder I'm leaving their old island without war I lately took the notion for to cross the briny ocean And I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning When they told me I must leave the place I tried to wear a cheerful face To find me own deep sorrow I was gone 
but the tears will surely blind me for the friends I leave behind me. And I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning with me bundle on me shoulder. So there's no man can be bolder. I'm leaving there on island without warning. For I lately took a notion for to cross the briny ocean. And I'm off to Philadelphia in the morning with me bundle on me shoulder. So there's no man can be bolder. I'm leaving just the spot where I was born in. But someday I'll take a notion to come back across the ocean To my home in dear old Ireland in the morning To my home in dear old Ireland in the morning
As I went a walking on a fine summer's morning, all the birds in the bushes did warble and sing. I spied lads and lasses in couples the sporting, going down to the factory their work to begin. I spied one among them, more fairer than any. Her lips were like roses that you would excel. Her cheeks like the lily that grows in the valley. And she was a hard-working factory girl. I stepped down beside her, more easily to view her. But upon me she cast such a look of disdain, saying, young man, have manners, and do not come near me. For although I'm a poor girl, I think it no shame. Fair maid, it's not to scorn you that I would adorn you. Pray do me one favour, tell me where do you dwell? Kind sir, please excuse me, for I have to leave you, for yonder is the sound of my factory bell. I have land, I have houses, all covered with ivy. I have gold in my pockets, and silver as well. And if you would come with me, a lady I'd make you. No more need you heed London factory bell. All of an sensation could be my ruination. Oh, go find you a lady, and may you do well. For I'm a poor orphan with no land or relations. For why? I'm just a hard-working factory girl. With these words she stepped from me, and quickly she did leave me. Now it's all for her sake, I must wander away. Into some lonesome valley where no one will know me to mourn for the loss of my factory girl. This is a song called The Flower of Femme, which was written by the poet Thomas Davis. Right red is the sun o'er the waves of Luxilen. A cool, gentle breeze from the mountain is streaming. While fair round its eyelets the small ripples play. But fairer than all is the flower of Fenay. Her hair 
is like night and her eyes like grey morning. She trips o'er the heather as if it's touch scorning. Yet her heart and her lips are as mild as may day. Young Eileen McMahon, the flower of Fenay. But who down the hillside than red deer runs fleeter? And who by the lakeside is hastening to greet her? Who but Fergus O'Farrell, that fiery young gay, the darling and pride of the flower of Fenay? One kiss and one clasp and one wild look of gladness. But why does it change all a sudden to sadness? He has told his sad fortune, he can no longer stay. He must leave his poor Eily alone in Fenay. For Fergus O'Farrell was true to his sire land, but the dark hand of tyranny drove him from Ireland. He joins the brigade in the wars far away. But he vows he'll return to the flower of Fenay. He fought at Cremona, she hears of his story. He fought at Cassano, she's proud of his glory. Yet sadly she sings Shula Rune all the day. Oh, come home, my darling, come home to Fenay. Eight long years have passed and she's nigh broken hearted. Her reel and her rock and her, her flax she has parted. She sails with the wild geese to Flanders away and leaves her sad parents alone in Fenay. Lord Clare on the field of Ramillies is charging. Before him the Sassanach squadrons enlarging. Behind him the cravats their section display. Beside him rides Fergus and shouts for Fenay. On the slopes of La Joudoine the Frenchmen are flying. Lord Clare and his squadron, the foe still defying. Outnumbered and wounded, retreat in array. And bleeding lies Fergus and thinks of Fenay. In the cloisters of Ypres a banner is swaying. Beside it a pale weeping maiden is praying. This flag 
makes the sole trophy of Ramillies fray. This nun is poor Eily, the flower of Venae. Uh, the song I'm going to sing is The Bold Shall Milliers, written by Jim Roster at Castle Bridge in 1905. It was about the All-Ireland hurling final of 1890, played in November 1890 between Castle Bridge, representing Wexford, and Abolog representing Cork. Um, there was a big needle to the match from the get-go because uh, the parish priest Canon Doran at Castle Bridge died and Castle Bridge looked for a postponement which Cork wouldn't agree to. So there was a sort of bad feeling around the match from the start. Um, and anyway, Cork went ahead in the first half of the game, but Castle Bridge came back in the second half and they went ahead. Uh, and with 10 minutes to go, Cork walked off the field complaining of the rough play of the Castle Bridge men. Uh, there's a couple of and, and the Central Council of the GAA subsequently awarded the All-Ireland of 1890 to Cork. Uh, and we're still sore about it around here. Uh, a couple of points of interest um, from a historical point of view. Uh, Castlebridge scored 2-2, Cork scored 1-6. At that time in the GAA, a goal trumped any number of points. So the scoring system is different than it is now. Secondly, uh, the song references uh, Tom the Devil who was an officer in the North Cork militia who were sent to put down the 1798 Rising and Tom the Nev Devil was notorious for pitch capping rebels and, and, and general torture and bad behaviour and so on. Um, that's about it. I got this song from the singing of Paddy Berry who got it from the late Paddy Donoghue of Corraclo who kept the song alive for years. The Bold Shell <clears throat> In the year of 1890 for long years will be remembered the Shelmaliers from Wexford went to Dublin by train. Leinster against Munster for the championship of Ireland. Clontorp the place appointed to finish our last game. We sent to Cork a telegram asking for a postponement as the Reverend Canon Doran was called to God on high. Asking for a little time with respect to his dying until the week of Sunday. This to us they did deny. We would not play till after we buried our loved pastor who glorified his master for over fifty years. In the cemetery we laid him and then we went to play them. Determined for to bait them we're the bold Shelmaliers. <coughs> At twenty minutes after one, when this great game it had begun, the cart men won the toss and they tried our boys to tame. And while the wind was high, some experiments they did try. And with the castle bridge men played a fast and thrilling game. The ball went up and down, back across and all around. The cart men had the best of it for them, there were loud cheers. But the Emmets men intended their goal would be defended and win before they ended would the ball shell maliers the half time whistle it grew shrill and the emmets got the wind the play not in their favour now for fifteen minutes more six points and a goal that was the whole I'll tell you for certain that the cart men did score but the bridge men got the leather and they all went down together and the shouts came from all Leinster, you have ended their career. And the Emmett's men expressing said, We'll teach you a lesson. Made two goals in succession for the ball shell when the cork men got spun out, they complained of the roughness when they saw they were defeated on a score of two to one. And the referee inclined with great quickness of mind and bade them leave the field, says he, I've left you there too long. 
The longer cork remained that day, the more the bridge would beat them. Before they did defeat them, they were as swift as deer. But forlorn, sad and dreary, worn out, weak and weary, away ran a bullog from the bold Shelmaliers. I'll give to you the forwards, George Sinnott and Pat Furlong, Pat Devericks and Bill Fortune were a driving force that day. Jack Leary and Will Doran they were the boys for scoring and two to one they'd goal them for the bold Shelmaniers our middle piece been twice as strong John Roster and Bill Furlong Jim Murphy and MacDonald were the boys that laid them low every time they'd meet them they'd put the cart men sleeping you'd swear there was a wake and for no sign of life did show Tom Murphy and Will Neville, they began to lay them level when they taught at Tom the devil with his pitch cap and his shears. Cork first tried to win by morning, but when the greens were scoring, they flew like and she corums from the bold Shelmaniers. There was Laren, Martin, Lacey, Tom Devericks and Owen Daly. Jim Fogarty and Will Leary were our two great men of fame. There was George and Michael Brown who hurled the ball well up and down. And our captain Nicholas Daly who played a hero's game. I've given you the twenty-one with muscle, bone and sinew strong. I pray God will their days prolong for many and many's the year. With their Emmett's costumes wearing, no heroes look more daring than the champions of old Aaron, the bold Shalmaliers. Up the shells. This is an English translation of Auron Winche or the Song of Muinish. It's attributed to Mora Nitlortig, who was born on Wienish Island in the 19th century, but lived most of her adult life in Letterkala after she married Tamin Bon O'Connila. Her dying wish was that her remains should be ferried across to Wienish for burial, but when she died, a fierce storm blew up which lasted for three days and she was buried in Letterkala. I'll do the first verse in Irish and uh, I'll continue with an English translation. The moin tri legi wargi Knur schleta wado hir Gani nak vio nak lum ganetchen gloss is free on snack the shade of who's the yas, son gui rau the team. Tamoine hurrall the Mohammedan one, near a wadded lumani. If I were three leagues out to sea, or on the mountains high, with no living thing for company, but the lonely curlers cry. With the blinding snow around me blowing, and the north wind driving strong, if I were talking to my Tamine born, the night would not be long. Oh God, what will I do at all? This winter is turning cold, and I won't hear my children call when the bell for me is tolled. It breaks my heart from them to part Before the springtime of the year With the green leaves growing on every tree And the cuckoo loud and clear Go make for me a coffin fine From the boards of oak so grand To Mwinish send for Shanna Hine Let the work be by his hand then tie a ribbon in my hair, place my cap upon my head, and let three young girls from the hill be there to mourn me lying dead. And when I die, if my family are there to close my eyes, 
Tis they will wait me decently for three long days and night. With the white clay pipes going round the room and the whiskey flowing free, and Pardine Moore will ferry me home if his pucon can put to sea. And as you put into Gun of Bui, let the flags fly in the air. Don't let me in let us lie. There's none of my people there. But bear my bones to Muinish, where they'll keen me loud and clear. And the lights will shine along the shore, and I won't be lonesome there. The first day of April I'll never forget Three English lassies together they met They mounted their horses and swore solemnly That they would play a trick on the first man they see At me fall they all daddy, fall they all daddy Fall they all daddy, sing fall they all day now Campbell the drover went riding that day, and soon he encountered these lassies so gay. They reined in their horses, and he did the same, and in close conversation together they came. What me fall they're all daddy, fall they're all daddy, fall they're all daddy, sing fall they're all day. They asked him to show them the way to the inn, and would he drink whiskey or would he drink gin? Then Campbell made answer and said with a smile, Sure I long for to taste the strong ale of Carlisle. Would me fall the all daddy, fall the all daddy, fall the all daddy, sing fall the all day. They called in the servants and started a dance. They ordered the landlord to spare no expense. They danced the next morning till twixt eight and nine, and they called for their breakfast and afterwards wine. What me fall the all daddy, fall the all daddy, fall the all daddy, sing fall the all day. They mounted their horses, alas and alack. It dawned on the landlord, they weren't coming back. He said, my dear Irishman, I am afraid that those three English jokers a trick on you played. Would me fall their old daddy, fall their old daddy, fall their old daddy, sing fall their old day. Never mind, said old Campbell, if they've gone astray. I've plenty of money, the reckoning to pay. But sit down beside me before that I go, and I'll teach you a trick that perhaps you don't know. It may fall their old daddy, fall their old daddy, fall their old daddy, sing fall their old day. I'll teach you a trick that's contrary to law. Two kinds of whiskey from one cask to draw. The landlord being eager to learn of this plan, straightway to the cellar with Campbell he ran. What me fall their old daddy, fall their old daddy, fall their old daddy, sing fall their old day. He soon bore a hole in a very short space. He bade the landlord put your thumb on this place. He soon bore another, place your other thumb here. Whilst I, for a tumbler, must run up the stair. With me fall their all daddy, fall their all daddy, fall their all daddy, sing fall their all day. He mounted his horse and was soon out of sight. The ostler came in in a terrible fright. He searched the whole house high up and low down. Half dead in the cellar, his master he found. What me fall their all daddy, fall their all daddy, fall their all daddy, sing fall their all day. 
Go fetch that bold Irishman, loudly he cried. I fear he has vanished, the ostler replied. He said, my dear landlord, I am afraid that Campbell the drover, a trick on ya played with me father all daddy. Father all daddy, father all daddy, sing father all day. Okay, this is a, a cheery little love song from the great Ulster song tradition. And I first heard uh, Jim McFarland singing it along with his wife in the Goline just back in December. And in fact, if you want to hear Jim's version of it, uh, he has a recording of it up on the ITMA in the Inishon Song Project uh, in there on the ITMA. You can listen to it there. As I roved out on a fine summer's day, the fields were in blossom and the meadows were gay. I spied a wee lassie tripping over the green, and I took her for Helen, that greasy and queen, that greasy and queen, that greasy and queen, and I took her for Helen, that greasy and queen. She's admired by others, I know them right well. Every morning to view that sweet spot where she dwells, beneath the hawthorn at the brink on yon hill. May she he never marry, but think on me still. But think on me still, but think on me still. May she never marry, but think on me still. Ah, me parents died on me, and it's all for their sake. And oft times it causes my poor heart to break. But the more I think on it, the more I will say that there's no one will be mine but the wee lass on the bray. The wee lass on the bray, the wee lass on the bray. For there's no one will be mine but the wee lass on the bray. Oh, and faith, there's a decline over yon far off sky, and it's off to my darling, like a lightning I'll fly, if the night were as long as the long summer's day. I would cheerfully sit with the wee lass on the bray, the wee lass on the bray, the wee lass on the bray. I would cheerfully sit with the wee lass on the bray. So fare thee well, darling, I love you the best. And may you be happy, and may you be blessed, and may you think on me when I'm far away. For there's no one will be mine but the we lass on the bray, the we lass on the bray, the we lass on the bray. For there's no one will be mine but the we lass on the bray, the we lass on the bray, the we lass on the bray. For there's no one will be mine but the we lass on the bray. This is a song called Wexford 1169. I wrote it about two weeks ago, 26th of March actually I wrote it. 
The low of the cattle booms like a foghorn, away in the distance cross fields gold with corn. The Normans knew good land when they crossed the sea, were in heaven by land and at Bano. Brought rabbit, built warrens, first fodder for horse, they're the reason our ditches are riches in gorse. Their pastorals lifted our Irish love songs. Yes, the Normans give blood to our channels. In my own case, grandparents were one from each side. MacBrannan took Fismaris to have as his bride, and the Feebon O'Darty to his giant bride. Well, he married a Welsh from Paleron. They give us most of our towns, yes, and parish set up. But they were the bloodhounds and we a mere pup. Their castles and baileys, though impressive to view, were built to keep us with the horses. Primogenitor, splintered our leaders or chiefs, as they tightened their laws, making most of us thieves. The Thua and Clon in the dung heap were thrown. We were there to cut wood and draw water. In my own case, grandparents were one from each side. MacBrannan courted Fitzmaurice to have as his bride, and the Feebon not darty to his pride and joy. Well, he married a Welsh from Paleron. But in time, Gael and Gaul learned to live side by side, and to choose one another to be groom and bride. We were glad for some years to have a Fitz in the goal, and another as a mentor and trainer. The Barretts, the Bennets, the Blakes and the Browns, Curtis and Dillons and French built our towns. Devericks and Lambert and walls of renown with Harper and Hussey and Nagel. In my own case, grandparents were one from each side, MacBrannan Court of Fitzmaurice to have as his bride, and the Feebon O'Darty to his giant pride, while he married a Welsh from Paleron. Hello everybody, we're going to sing one of our favourite songs now. It's a love song from the Scottish Borders and it's called The Brim of the Cowden Nows. How blithe was I each morning to see my last come out the bun and she'd run to me. I'd greet her with good will. Oh, the broom, the bunny, bunny broom, the broom of the cowed and loud. Fame would I be Bonnie, 
Bonnie Black Hair by Martin Carthy. On the 14th of May, at the dawn of the day, with me gun on me shoulder, to the woods I did stray in search of some game. And if the weather proved fair, to see could I get a shot at the bonny black hair. Well, I met a young girl there, her face like a rose, her skin was as fair as the lily that grows. I said, me fair maiden, why ramble you so? Can you tell me where the bonny black hair do go? Well, the answer she gave me, her answer was no, but it's under me apron, no, they say it do grow, and if you don't deceive me, I vow and declare, we'll both go together to shoot the bonny black hair. Well, I lay this girl down with her face to the skies, Took out me ramrod and me bullets likewise. I said, wrap your legs round me and dig in with your heels. For the closer we get now, love, the better it feels. Now the birds, they were singing in the bushes and trees. And the song that they sang was, oh, she's easy to please. I felt her heart quiver and I knew what I'd done. Said I, have you had enough of my old sporting gun? Well, the answer she gave me, her answer was nay. It's not often, young sportsman, that you come this way. And if your powder is good and if your bullets play fair, why don't you keep firing at the bonny black hair? Well, me powder is wasted and me bullets all gone. Me ramrod is limp and I cannot fire on. But I'll be back in the morning and if you are still there, we'll both go again to shoot at the bonny black hair. Or Ruth and Lane, written by Jack Cochin in 1957. In the good old county, Wexford is a pleasant place to be. The Collins, they are beautiful and there's lovely scenery. But near the village of Folkses, this is a spot I must explain. It's Ireland's leading motorway called the Poor Cuthbert Lane. There's 15 turns and there's 17 bumps and the mud is two feet high. In the middle of the road, the grass grows green, the donkeys can't pass by. There's 140 potholes and the briars on not remain. For the county council never heard tell of sweet poor Gother Lane. Without a pair of Wellingtons, you won't get very far. You'd be indeed unfortunate to go there in your car, for the springs would break in the big end shake, the chassis feel a strain, the wheels all spin and the brakes give in down the poor gutter lane. And when it comes to winter time and the trails do overflow, no vehicle of any height down the slopely lane can go. You'd be bogged to the back axle if the drive you were insane. But could swim or float or sail a boat down the poor Gutter Lane. 
without sand or gravel, there's not chippens are not tar. The lane of four and quarter is well known, but near and far. You can go to Wales or England, you can travel France or Spain, but you'll never get the patents yet at the four and quarter lane. Now there's one thing in its favour, if you go down there at night, you won't be caught in a traffic jam or stopped by the traffic lights. And you won't be interrupted if courting you can't complain. You can stop all night with your darling down the Borough Cutter Lane. There's 15 turns and there's 17 bumps and the mud is two feet high. In the middle of the road, the grass grows green, the donkeys can pass by. There's 140 potholes and the briars on cut remain. For the county council never heard tell of sweet Bora Gutter Lane. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to do a recitation for you uh, about an uncle, John Bryan. My uncle John Bryan lived with his mother, a widow woman aged 94. But she died of a sudden after eating black pudding from a pig that died three weeks before. Oh John, he was sad, for it was the only pig that he had. And now it lay dead at his feet. Oh, his poor heart was breaking. But he said he'd not waste the bacon for himself and his mum love red meat. A bar of salt he procured, the bacon was cured. He hung it up on a crook over the fire. Such a fine chunk of mace, did no best before days, and no word of when it would expire. In the weeks that passed by, every morning a fry, they had two pork chops each round midday. For dinner it was bacon. And if I'm not mistaken, it was crew beans and rasheens for the tea. Then one Friday night, John awoke with a fright to hear his mum give a strange cough. <coughs> he rushed to her side. In his arm, sure she died. Her last words were, the pudding was off. Oh, John, he was distraught. But his very first thought was perhaps not let her go. They had been together for years, shared the joys and the tears, for without her, where would he go? Though at fifteen he left school, he was nobody's fool, though not brilliant at figures or words. But from a tutor named Bernie, he learned taxidermy, how to stuff small animals and birds. So armed with this knowledge from St. Peter's College, he set to work with great care, and he worked through the night so that his mum would look right. He even put a perm in her hair. When the job was complete, well, his mum, she looked neat, dressed up in her fine Sunday wear, with her hat on her head. If you didn't know she was dead, well, by God, you'd never have guessed it. No, a week prior to her death, his mum expressed the regret that to the seaside she had never gone, for she felt an old dip might cure her bad hip. He'll go for your birthday, said John. So to keep her alive until she reached 95, well, that was John's only intention. But first things came first, and John feared for the worst when he went down to town for a pension. The postmistress said, John, how is your mum getting on? I hope that she's feeling okay. Said John, she's all right. She had a very quiet night and she's not been complaining today. It was the July 1st Friday. John prayed for a dry day. He took his mum out to the line. He set her up in a pose as though she was pegging out clothes. And he thought to himself, she looks fine. Father Brown called around. John made not a sound as he hid in behind the plum tree. How are you, Mrs. Brown? John croaked out, I'm fine, but I'll not be bringing in for the tea. 
Well, her birthday rolled on. It was the 6th of July. John backed the car up to the door. He loaded his mum and some brown bread and jam. And they both set off for Thermore. When he reached the seashore about a quarter to four, John found a quiet spot on the beach. He had twenty pound in a jar, cost him three for the car. That left him with eight fifty each. He pulled out a deck chair, put his mum sitting there, as though she was having a nap, poured himself a small paddy, and his mum and my waddy and left Ireland's own on her lap. John was soon fast asleep. The waves rolled in from the deep, and the tide crept closer to the shore. It swirled around his mum's body, spilled her last of my waddy, but John just continued to snow. Oh, he awoke with a shock, Oh, it was now near nine o'clock. The tide had come in and moved on. The sun was now low. He said, Mammy, we'll go. But your mammy was already gone. He looked out over the tide. Oh, Mammy, he cried, as he watched her sail over the foam. With a tear in his eye, he waved her goodbye, then packed up his stuff and went home. Though his ma was recovered, his deed was never discovered. They said a woman drowned aged 94. But John, he knew better, and he'd never forget her, nor the birthday they spent in Tramore. Thank you. The night was dark round Limerick, and everything was still. It was for the foe in ambush, we lay beside the hill. Like lions bold, we waited. To dash upon our prey As we rode with Sarsfield at our head At the dawning of the day From Dublin came the foemen with guns and warlike store to take the town of Limerick they wanted ten times o'er but little was there dreaming that we would be their doom as we rode with Sarsfield at our head right down from Wildschlee Bloom at the lonely hour of midnight each man leapt on his steed and through the town of Cullen we dashed with lightning speed and o'er the hills we thundered to Balanity's walls Where lay the foe securely With guns and arms and all They asked us for our password and Sarsfield was the man 
Oh, here I am, our general cried, as down on them we ran. Oh, had we breached the firmament, the moon and stars gave light. And for the battle of the boy, we had revenge that night. Loud laughed our gallant general, as fast we rode away. And many's the health we drank to him in Limerick town next day. Here's another health to Sarsfield, who led us one and all. We blew up the royal artillery at Balanites' wall. Hi everyone, hope you're all keeping safe and staying well. Uh, this is a little song uh, from the north of Ireland called The Mountains of Pomeroy. The morn was breaking bright and fair, the lark sang in the sky. As the maid she bound her golden hair, with a blight glance in her eye. For who beyond the gay green woods was awaiting her with joy? Oh, who but her gallant ran her dine? On the mountains of Pomeroy, full often in the dawning hour, full often in twilight brown, he met the maid in the woodland bower. Where the stream comes foaming down For they were faithful in their love No wars could e'er destroy No tyrant's laws touched or dying on the mountains of Pomeroy. My love, she cried, I'm sore afraid, for the foeman's force and you. They tracked you in the woodland bower, and all the valley through. My kinsmen frown when you are named, your life they would destroy. Beware, they say, of Renardine, on the mountains of Pomeroy. Fear not, fear not, sweetheart, he said, fear not, foe for me. No iron chain shall there entwine, the arm that would be free 
Or leave your cruel kin and come When the lark is in the sky And it's with my gun I'll guard you On the mountains of Pomeroy the morn had come, she rose and fled from her cruel kin and home. And bright the woods and rosy red, and the tumbling torrents foam. But the mist came down, and the tempest roared, and it all around destroy, and the pale drowned bride met her in her time on the mountains of Palm An outlawed man in a land forlorn He scorned to turn and fly But he kept the cause of freedom safe On the mountains of Pomeroy As on the glen one Easter morn to a city fair old I there are mid lines of marching men in squadrons passed me by. No pipe did hum, no battle drum did sound its loud tattoo. But the angelus bell o'er the liffy swells rang out in the foggy dew. Right proudly high over Dublin town they hung out the flag of war. Twas better to die neath an Irish sky than at Sovla or Sodelbar. And from the plains of Royal Meath, strong men came hurrying through. While Britannia's sons with their long range guns sailed in through the foggy dew. Twas England bade our wild geese go that small nations might be free. But their lonely graves are by Sovla's waves O'er the shores of the great North Sea. But had they died by Pierce's side, Or fought with Calbro, their graves we'd keep where the fiends sleep neath the shroud of the foggy dew. 
But the bravest fell, and the requiem bell rang mournfully and clear. For those who died that Easter tide in the springtime of the year. The world did gaze in deep amaze at those fearless men, but few who bore the fight that freedom's light might shine in the foggy dew. As back through the glen I rode again, my heart with grief was sore. For I parted then with valiant men, whom I never shall see no more. But to and fro in my dreams I'll go, and I kneel and I pray for you. For slavery fled, O oh, glorious dead, when you fell in the foggy do Do you kinda of sort of um gonna give a go to um the bold Fenian men and the washing machine is my accompaniment in the background <laughs> so apologies about that. Twas down by the glenside I met an old woman a plucking young nettles. She ne'er saw me coming. I listened a while to the song she was humming. Glorio. Glorio to the bold Fenian men. When I was a young girl, there marching and drilling, I walk in the glenside, some awesome and thrilling, for they love dear old Ireland and to die they were willing Glorio, Glorio to the bold Fenian men Some died by the glenside some died by a stranger, and wise men have told us their cause was a failure, but they loved dear old Ireland, and they never fear danger. Glorio, Glorio to the bold Fenian men. I went on my way, God be praised that I met her, be lifelong or shorter, I'll never forget her. We may have brave men, but we'll never have better. Glory, oh, glory, oh, to the bold Fenian men.
Hello everyone, hope you're all keeping well. We're going to sing Taller and Rhoda. Is he the second topper? Shah, or Mishan Fan and Boo? Shah, Yark, May, and Anders, but I shall spell rock that's new. Thea grew a tree last of Scarlet Namor, born a new Smart Yark, Tish, and Mishan, near Lushima. And tis time the neighbours should all be gone. Tis short your sleep till the cock will crow. Oh, weary on it and weary I leave you finish the age and read. For the more I see of it, the more I feel all the pride of Ireland so long ago. Oh, weary on it and weary on. Now, James, a kushla were tired to pray and a single decade is all we'll say the boat is early and the clock is slow oh we on it and we are Beside the Grishak I sit and doze I darn 
their stockings and I air their clothes. All starched and ironed and white as snow. Oh, weary and and we Oh, do she this morning now. I will light the fire and I'll milk the cow. But I'll never call you again, I know. Oh, we I watched them waving up Carrick Hill. I heard them crying and I hear them still. The summer sunshine has turned to snow. Oh, we Kind sir, don't keep.